Hey everybody, it's December 26th. Hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. Um, I'm going to make the video today. It's a story. It's not really a testimony, but uh, it's a story about how I messed up, and uh, and I, I, I'm going to I'm going to tell you how what it is. Uh, and this happened a while ago, but it stuck with me ever since. And um, so I'm just going to tell it because I learned I learned a lesson from it. And uh, so I used to work at this uh, uh, network. I, I used to live at this at a ministry called Calvary Pentecostal Tabernacle down in Ashland, Virginia. And I uh, I lived there. I uh, played drums for the worship team. And then whenever there wasn't service happening, I would work around the campground just doing odd things. Um, it was a uh, it was a it was a ministry where you could go there and you could you could stay there you could live there, and uh, you just became part of the the team, um, the the volunteer ministry team, and um, people would come from all over the world to live there, and and volunteer as part of the team, and they would also uh, come from all over the world to to stay there for a week or two and just be ministered to, and uh, it, the the campground is very strong in the prophetic prophetic and and signs wonders and miracles and healings and just the gifts of the spirit it's, it's just a really great atmosphere for the presence of god and just uh for missionaries to come off of the mission field it's just a, it's a place for them to come and be rejuvenated and refreshed and and uh sent back out to you know full of fire and and faith and power to do the work that the lord's called them to so that's that's the type of ministry it is and so i was living there and I, I'd been there for for quite a long for quite a while, and um, and so what happens is every day at the tabernacle, every day at the, at the campground, um, they would do morning prayer, and so I I think it was at uh, I, I think it started at seven thirty or eight o'clock, seven thirty maybe it was morning prayer, and then the uh, the more the first service starts at eight o'clock, and. Uh, and they had this big giant bell that they would ring every morning at seven, and that's that's to call everybody to get up to come out to eat breakfast. When breakfast was done, they would ring this giant bell, which was at seven o'clock, and they would ring this giant bell, and people from all over the campground would come gather at the cafeteria and eat breakfast. And then at seven thirty is when uh, morning prayer started. Now it wasn't mandatory for everyone to come or anything like that. It was just something that was offered at the campground, whether people came or not, was up to them. Even for the uh, you know they liked for the volunteers to come every morning to morning prayer uh, but that didn't always happen but either way it was my morning uh to run the morning prayer I, it was my job that morning to to go in turn on the sound system grab the microphone get up front call everybody who had already gathered there to call everybody to come on up front and get in a circle and we're going to start praying and uh there was a what is it um there were five things that we would pray for every morning. And I'm trying to remember what the five things were. It was like we'd pray for the campground or for the ministry. We would pray for the finances. We would pray for the leadership um, of the United States. We'd pray for um, uh, missionaries. And uh, we would pray for, I think, something else. Maybe it was just the, uh, the leaders of the ministry as well. So, you know, the president and all them. And then we'd pray for... The, the local leaders and the ministry leaders. Oh, no, peace in Israel. I think that was the fifth thing was, was peace in Israel. Either way, we had this list. We, we would go by it, go by this list every uh, morning when we, we would do prayer. And we'd be in a circle and I'd take the mic and I would just, we, I'd just while we're praying, and I would just look and whoever the Lord put on my heart to hand them the mic, I would just go up and I said, do you mind praying for whatever, whatever it was we were praying for at that moment? you know one of those five things and they would say okay and they'd pray for it when they were done praying they'd hand me the mic and then i would go and, and hand it to the next person to pray for the next thing and sometimes i would pray in between whatever just just to keep the atmosphere going or keep you know whatever we were doing so uh my dog just came down she didn't know i was in the backyard <laughs> she thought a stranger was out here all right calm down Shh, calm down okay so anyway this one morning, it was my turn to pray. It was my turn to lead the uh, the prayer service. And if you go figure, my alarm clock didn't go off that morning. And it's and my room was right above the sanctuary. 
So I could always hear if anybody was in a sanctuary worship and praying or if anybody was down there making any kind of noise, I would always hear it because my room was directly above the sanctuary. So that morning, you know, I woke up and I'm hearing all this ruckus and stuff going on in the sanctuary and I'm listening. I thought, like, man. And then it dawned on me, oh, today's my day to pray. Where, why did my alarm go off? I looked, well, you know, today's my day to pray. And what times I looked and that's when I realized my alarm didn't go off. I keep saying my day to pray. It was my day to lead prayer, the prayer service. And, and I looked and I was like, oh my, because my alarm hadn't gone off. Prayer service started in like three minutes. And I'm just, I'm laying there in bed and I'm thinking, I, it, it, it starts in three minutes. So I, I jump up, I ran into the bathroom, brushed my teeth, threw some water in my hair real quick, slicked it back or whatever, I don't know, took off down the steps, went around and got in the sanctuary, went and turned to make sure the sound system was on, got the mic, turned the mic on, a bunch of people gathered, and by that time it was ready for it to start. I might have even been a little bit late, like a minute or two late, but got in there, and we just started praying, seeking the Lord, and right away, just, just kind of like, you know, calling on God and all, and... And actually, we, you know, so what we would do is we would pray for about 15 minutes individually, whether in our seats or just walking around the sanctuary or whatever, just praying, seeking the Lord. And uh, and then after the 15 minutes, we would call everybody into up front to, to pray in a circle. And that's when we'd pray for those five things. So anyway, we're doing morning prayer, right? And I'm walking around pray and seek the Lord. I got the mic. We're ready to go to call everybody up in the circle. And then, so I, I turned on the mic and said, okay, if everyone would like to come gather up front here. And, and I, and you know, people were like looking at me funny. I'm like, come on, I, you know, whatever. I'm encouraging people to come up. So they all came up and um, I looked down. I'm just standing there was like thinking what's saying. I looked down, right? And I'm standing in my pajamas and I'm like, oh my Lord, I just jumped out of bed. And ran down like I brushed my teeth. I didn't have my stinky breath. But so I'm standing in pajamas, which was like some plaid pants or something, and a t-shirt. You would a t-shirt that probably matched, but whatever. I mean, it, it didn't look horrible. But I'm nothing. Nevertheless, I'm in my pajamas, and the prayer service would go right into the main service. Like we would end right as the main service would be beginning. So as we're wrapping up the prayer service. People are coming in. Worship team members are coming in, setting up, getting getting their instruments together. The the guest speaker, whoever, all these people are coming and people are following in the door, sitting in their seats while we are still up front praying and seeking the Lord. And and uh, and I'm looking, and I'm I'm supposed to be playing drums, and I can't just go up and start playing drums in my pajamas. Like it would be crazy. I, and I was so glad that the leadership of the campground didn't walk in and see me up there leading the, the prayer service in my pajamas. I mean, it was just, I was, I was like, you know, it was, it was kind of stressful for me. And, uh, but the thing is, God spoke to me that morning while we, while I'm up there leading the prayer service. And he said, pray for persecuted Christians. And I'm like, what? And he said, have somebody pray for persecuted Christians. And I said, Oh, Lord. Okay. And that's that's deviating from the schedule. That's deviating from what we do every morning. That wasn't traditional. That wasn't that wasn't the routine to have to do something else outside of that. Now, I'm not saying I didn't have the freedom to do it or that it wasn't okay, but it was it was just different. And I said, "Okay, Lord." So, after we prayed for everything else, I said, "Okay, I said before we uh whatever dismiss i said i'm gonna i really feel the lord calling us to pray for the persecuted christians around the world and i said is that on anybody's heart that a lady sticks her hand right away like she was ready to do it she was on fire and i said all right I hand the mic to her she just went off and you could tell this something the lord had already been dealing with her about on her heart and he did put it on my heart i guess since it's he told me to pray for it so everything she prayed was great i mean it was fire and and then gave the bike to me and I just, I said, I'm just going to continue to pray for these, you know, about with the persecuted Christians. Anyway, while this whole thing was happening, from the very get-go that I said, we're going to pray for persecuted Christians, as soon as I changed it up a little bit from what we usually do, it, it was like the presence of God started getting stronger and stronger in this, in the sanctuary. And as we were praying, as I handed the mic to the lady, the presence of God really came down strong and I got it. And then I, so I felt like I wanted to keep just going. So I started praying and it kept coming. The presence of God really, really came down like very, very way stronger than it usually comes down for morning prayer. 
and it was so strong like it was contagious like you just wanted to go after it and it was like call fall on your face cry out passionate just seeking the lord like amazing type of presence it wasn't like oh i got a little bit of goosebumps let me just give the lord a clap offering press it was it was amazing it was really powerful and and i'm looking at my watch and i'm like we got 10 minutes till we got 10 minutes until the service starts and as soon as the service starts worship kicks off right right they don't they don't wait for nothing worship kicks off everybody has to be in their place i had to be behind the drums in 10 minutes ready to play and i'm in my jammies <laughs> my pajamas as this is not going to this is not going to work and i kept looking at the door nobody from the leadership had actually walked into the to the sanctuary yet and so you know i was thankful for that i'm also i'm also thankful that the presence of god is coming down amazingly strong but at the same time i'm knowing i know that i got to get upstairs i got to change clothes and and i couldn't hand the mic to somebody else i, I mean it was only like leadership people people who were staying at the ministry volunteers who were working there and 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 on the ministry team and there was nobody there and i'm looking and and there's no one there yet you know and so I, so I ended up we sought the lord for like five more minutes and i i had to shut it down i had to shut down the service i had to shut down the prayer i, I you know just turn the mic off okay buddy you guys can go pray seek the lord on your own or whatever we're gonna the service will be starting in five minutes and whatever however however it worked out you know i don't remember exactly but it was something like that and i just remember being so grieved in my spirit because i knew i really felt so strong that this thing that we had started with the presence of god started filling that place and as we were praying and passionately going after it and people were wanting the mic to pray and, and you know to do this thing um i felt like it was just going to carry over and as people came in for the morning service that it would have just they would have just caught walked right into a cloud of glory they would have just walked right into this amazing presence that was already happening and instead of starting from scratch it would have just taken off from there and maybe instead of just going and starting and starting singing in praise and jumping up and down and, you know hallelujah happy the presence of god would have been so strong that we would have just delve right into the worship service because it was it was a passionate like intimate presence of god and and you know the sensitivity of the worshipers and the worship team we would have just delved right into the worship service and just gone after god and and who knows how that service would have ended up who knows what what kind of breakthroughs and power would have been released and and i just i felt so bad i was so grieved in my spirit because i had to shut that service down i had to stop the prayer service and i had to go change clothes i had woke up late and and i just wasn't prepared i wasn't ready for for what was getting ready to happen and and who would have thought i had no idea that that was getting ready to happen and it figured that you know the one time when when i was leading the prayer service i, I woke up late not the one time i'd let it many times but this particular time my alarm clock didn't go off and uh you know i was doing this down there in my pajamas it, so the cool thing is god can move no matter what you're wearing no matter how you're dressed you know if you're obedient god's going to move and the presence of god will show up right and, and it usually requires sacrifice because in the, even in the old testament the fire always fell on the sacrifice um but I just wasn't prepared to walk, to run with it that, that morning. And uh, I don't know. Maybe I should have just, I don't know. Maybe I should have just stayed there and kept it going, pajamas or not. But, uh, you know, I had to go up. We had to wear a tie. That's how long ago it was. I had to wear, wear nice pants, a tie, you know, button-up shirt. And I was so far from that at that moment. Anyway, God bless everybody. Uh, I just want to encourage everybody to be ready in season and out of season. You never know when the Lord's going to show up, when he's going to speak to you, when he's going to have you step out and do something crazy. And it's it's usually never convenient. Like I said, the fire usually has to fall. It falls on a sacrifice, not on the, uh, uh, you know, whatever. You know, when you're obedient, God will bless that. He does require obedience rather than sacrifice. So I know that sounds a little bit confusing now, but um, we, we have to obey the Lord. We have to obey God when he says do something. We got to listen. And uh, and then, you know, after that, just keep keep trying to listen as much as possible. Don't do not do like I did and, and make a mistake. And I quenched the presence of God. I quenched the Holy Spirit. I shut it down because, I, you know, I had my own agenda, which was going and getting dressed like I should have been dressed already. 
Um, and so I, I, I've gone long today. It's 15 minutes. I apologize. Hope everyone's having a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. God bless.